Hello, and thanks for taking the time to watch this hit film tutorial. My name is Axel Wilkinson, and in this two-part tutorial, we are going to walk through a hit film project from start to finish to help you get familiar with the basic tools and procedures that you will use in hit film. In part one, we'll spend about nine minutes creating a project, importing our media, and editing it all together. In part two, we'll get into creating effects and exporting. We have lots of other tutorials available as well, which cover more advanced and in-depth features of the software, but here we will focus on the basics. So, let's launch HitFilm and get started. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using HitFilm Ultimate, but if you have HitFilm Standard, don't worry, everything we do here will work exactly the same in both programs. So, when we launch HitFilm, we are greeted by the home screen. If you're connected to the internet, this screen provides links to tutorials, it lets you know when any updates to the software are released, and it gives you links to various aspects of the online community, such as the blog and the forums. The forums are a great place to interact with other HitFilm users, if you wanted to get help or discuss various ideas or techniques. The home screen also provides a list of recent projects that you have worked on. Let's click the New Project button to start a new project. This will move us to the project screen, where we can control the specific settings our project will use. The screens in HitFilm follow a logical progression as we work through the project, but we can move between screens at any time. If you know the specific formatting that your footage uses, you can choose the appropriate template from the template menu, or you can enter the specific values into the video properties. The right side of the screen provides basic explanations of all the settings that you can adjust here. If you aren't sure what settings to use though, don't worry, as we can let HitFilm choose the correct settings for us later. So let's just leave these at the default and click the Start Editing button to get into our project. This will open the next screen, Edit and Effects. Nearly all of your time in HitFilm will be spent in the Edit and Effects screen. So let's take a moment to get familiar with it. The screen is broken into panels, each of which serve a specific purpose. All media that you import will be organized into the media panel. You can edit this media together on the editor timeline. Anything placed into the editor can be seen in the viewer panel. And when you want to add effects, they can be found in the effects panel. In containers that hold more than one panel, you can switch between panels by clicking on the appropriate tabs. So, first, we need to import the media that we wish to use into our project. Click the large Import button in the Media panel. This will allow us to navigate to the location of our files. We can select them, and then click the Open button to import them into HitFilm. All of the files I've just imported are included in a zip file that you can download along with this tutorial. If you want to add an entire clip to the timeline, you can drag it directly from the Project Media list to the editor to do so. But if we want to trim out only a portion of the clip to use, we can also do that using the Preview Trimmer at the top of the Media panel. So let's start with our Wide Shot, and you can click Play to preview the contents of that. And as you can see, there's a lot of blank area at the beginning of this shot. So let's position this playhead to just before our actor walks on screen. And then we can press the I key on the keyboard to set the end point for this clip. Now we can press play again, watch through, find the area we want to stop. That should be plenty. And now if we press the O key, we'll set the out point. So I for in, O for out. And we don't need to worry too much at this point about getting the in and out points exact because we can continue to fine tune that once the clip is on the timeline. Now that we've isolated the portion of the clip we want to use, we can click on the preview trimmer and drag it to the editor and drop it in place. If your footage doesn't match the settings you chose in the project screen earlier, then we'll get an alert that asks us if we want to change the editor settings to match those of our footage. Click Yes, and the scene will automatically appear in the viewer. So let's repeat this process with our other clips to create a rough edit of our sequence. So from here, we're going to use the table close shot. We can just scrub through that if we want. We'll start a little bit before he reaches for the gun. We can press I and then scrub through until he's picked the gun up. That's about as much as we need, so we'll press O. Drag that one onto the timeline. And as we drag this one on, notice that as we get close to the first clip, it snaps over to close the gap 
in between them. So we don't have any space there that we don't want. So then we can drop that. Then we'll select our third shot. And you can actually, if you prefer, use these handles on either side of the viewer to control how much of the ends are trimmed off. So we'll come in somewhere around there. Play through. And firing. And firing. Okay, we probably only need one of those shots, so we can scrub back a bit. There's our first shot, and we can end it somewhere in there. So let's grab this second handle, and we'll just drag it back till it falls somewhere in that range, and add the third clip to the timeline. Now, we've got our three clips added, but as you can see, they're all kind of mashed over onto this end of the timeline, and it's hard to work with them at that size. So let's zoom in a little bit on our clips by using this zoom slider for the editor panel. Now that we have our rough edit, let's play it back to see how well our clips fit together by clicking the play button below the viewer. And fire. And fire. The general sequence works pretty well, but it would run a bit smoother if we trim the ends of our clips a bit more. In this first clip, the point where the actor turns his head is a logical place to cut, since we are cutting to what he is looking at. This is a common editing technique called cutting on the look, which helps make the cut flow smoothly. So I'll position the playhead right after he turns his head, and then using the selection tool, which is this arrow, we can drag the end of the clip over until it snaps to the playhead. Now this leaves a gap in our timeline, so right click in the gap and choose ripple delete gap from the menu and everything to the right of the gap on the timeline will automatically be shifted left to eliminate the gap. Now let's play back through that and see if that edit feels more natural. That works pretty good, but for the second cut, we have an issue where at the end of the second clip the gun is moving, but at the beginning of the third clip it's still down by his side. So we need to trim the final clip so the movement of the gun feels continuous. This technique is called cutting on motion and helps the two clips to flow together into a continuous scene. Position the playhead where the gun is partly raised into firing position, then select the razor tool. We can now click on the position of the playhead to slice the clip in two. And if we move the playhead, you can see now we've created this small clip which we cut off the front. And then if we click on the selection tool again, we could select this clip and press delete to remove it or you could right click on the clip, choose ripple delete object from the menu, and this will delete it and automatically close the gap that it would otherwise create. All right, now we can play through those edits again. And, firing. and since we only wanted the one gunshot, we can trim a bit off the end. And that's looking good for our edit. This is a good time to save our project. In the file menu, Click Save, then name your project and choose where you want to save it. In any video software, make it a habit to save your work regularly as you go. That way if the power goes out or aliens attack, you won't lose all of your work. Once the project is saved, we will be able to access it through the home screen of HitFilm anytime we launch the program, so we can resume working on it from the exact point we left off. Well done! We have now covered the basics of video editing in HitFilm. In part two of this tutorial, we'll get into the exciting stuff, adding a muzzle flash and sound effects to our gunshot, and then export the final video to finish it off. So take a break, grab something to drink if you need to, and join me back here for part two.